Now, we're looking today at the administration of the president in one year. We're focusing on security. Now, in that same ministerial briefing, Abu Bakr uh, Badaru pointed out that in the period under review, no fewer than 9,300 adversaries ranging from bandits, terrorists, kidnappers, and other criminals have been neutralized by the armed forces of Nigeria. He added that at least 1,437 suspected criminals among the aforementioned groups had been arrested, adding that 363 were killed last year by the military in their efforts to boost oil production in the country. Mr. Badar explained that the feat was achieved sequel to the improved synergy among the three service, services of the armed forces, including the Navy, Army, and Air Force, and sister security agencies. Now, just last month, the National Security Advisor, Malam Nuhu Ribadu, shared a significant update as a high-level African counter-terrorism meeting in Abuja. He revealed that the number of terrorism-related deaths in Nigeria has plummeted from a staggering 2,600 per month to less than 200. But it's not all good news, as reports indicate that kidnapping for ransom remains top on the list of security issues in the north of the country. Now, also, in a security incident tracker, Beacon Inter Intelligence, a private security company, has shown that there have been 5,461 cases of abduction and 9,858 fatalities in the last one year. Security and developmental expert Musa Salman and retired United States Army Captain, National Security and Defense Strategist, Bish Johnson, joins us from Abuja Studio. Good to have you both. Thank you for having us. Good afternoon, viewers. Good afternoon. Thank you for having us. All right, so let me begin with you, uh, Bish Johnson. You, you, I mean, you heard all I said about what the Minister of Defense, or you might have also followed that ministerial briefing where the Minister of Defense sort of said, look, this administration has done well in terms of security. But what's your own assessment of security in the country in the last one year? Well, um, I hope that the statistics that were provided by the minister and also the National Security Advisor are correct. Um, it would seem that we are, you know, moving in the right direction. Unfortunately, in my own view, um, we are not seeing um, a reflection of that statistics on the ground uh, that has been instant and uh, reported cases of uh, still, you know, um, abductions and uh, kidnappings for ransom. And so in my judgment, I think we still have a lot, uh, uh, a lot more to do uh, to be able to bring down insecurity in our country to a relative point in which uh, citizens are able to go about their normal daily activities without fear of being abducted or kidnapped uh, for ransom. Right, let me also get your, your, your view on this, Mr. Salman. Um, Bish Johnson seems to be saying, look, um, for, for, for him, those statistics are not a reality or, you know, it's not in tandem with the reality on ground. But what about your own assessment? Well, uh, thank you so much. First of all, um, I think uh, one year is uh, such a, a, a short time to uh, assess an administration completely. Uh, and for me, whereas I also uh, echo his uh, observations in terms of uh, the statistics and the reality on the ground, um, I want us to shift a bit or slightly away from um, those statistics and maybe uh, the, uh, there is improvement or not and kind of ask the beneficiaries, that's the, those that this service is being offered to, that's Nigerians, and say, do you feel secured uh, more uh, today than you were in the last one year? Uh, the answer will give us a pointer to uh, what the situation has been in the last one year. However, uh, even looking more strategic is to say, uh, when you're trying for us to assess this government, uh, we should assess it within the parameters of uh, the promise uh, made by uh, the government. That's from then uh, candidate Tinubu to uh, gov uh, I mean President Tinubu, and up to this um, up to this uh, time in the in, in the life of the administration, to say what are the key 
uh, deliverables that the administration tax itself with, and how far or how well have they performed uh, within that uh, uh, or based or judged from those uh, parameters that they set for themselves. Um, I, I would say that looking at all that, um, some, there were some missteps here and there, uh, but by and large, there seems to be a kind of uh, uh, deliberate action to, to perhaps uh, get things right. We're not, I mean, we're just starting. Uh, so for me, throughout this uh, program, I want to judge them based on some of those. And if we can remember, there was the uh, point agendas that were brought, uh, kind of, for example, the issue of adopting a proactive uh, uh, and intelligence-driven uh, approach to security. The question is that uh, from what we've seen in the past one year, is there a pointer to the fact that we have been proactive? Are we given intelligence uh, more uh, a kind of preference, or have we elevated the, the, the place of intelligence gathering and response uh, in the security architecture? Uh, this and, uh, could lay the foundation upon which to uh, assess the administration now in its first year and subsequent years uh, that uh, in the next uh, three years. All right, so let's, let's look at those metrics because you have talked about, you know, um, what the administration promised and then what it has done so far. Again, you've also talked about the fact that, look, this is just one year. Uh, but some will say, look, in one year, there should be ind indications that you are, you are heading in the right direction. But let's look at the metrics. One of them was to bolster um, our security forces. And they said that this administration will accelerate the reforms commenced under the present administration, which was that of the Buhari administration, in building a more robust, re-energized armed forces, as such which are recruit, train, and better equip um, additional military, police, paramilitary, and intelligence personnel. The key word there being recruit, train, and better equip. Uh, Bish Johnson, when you look at this, um, when you look at security today, uh, security agencies, you know, do we have more numbers now? Are they better equipped and are they trained? Well, so... Uh, uh, okay. Well, um, I have to agree with my co-panelists here that uh, um, it will be premature uh, to assess an administration just within a matter of uh, 11 months, um, particularly on issues like uh, security. Um, the security situation in the country was already bad uh, when the current administration came into office. And so um, we will not expect them to, within 11 months, do magic and uh, turn around the entire, you know, bad security situation. Uh, but it does seem to me that they are making serious and concerted efforts um, to see how issue of security in Nigeria can be addressed. This is not uh, an overnight problem. We didn't land, you know, to where we found ourselves security-wise overnight. It's something that had gone on uh, for several years. And even if there's going to be some reforms that is going to put us in the right direction, those reforms are not going to come overnight as well. Um, there is now discussion on whether or not we can adopt state policing. That conversation is ongoing and is a good one. It's a conversation that we must have. Um, the issue of recruiting and uh, training and equipping uh, security agencies, particularly the armed forces and intelligence communities, is not something that is also going to be done overnight. It's something that is going to take a whole, um, it, will take a, it will take a period of time uh, for you to be able to recruit and train. I, there was a last uh, recruitment exercise with the police. Um, I seen that the army has also advertised you know, their own uh, recruitment. And so all these things will take a while. So I hope that... Well, if, if I may come in, Mr. Mr. Johnson, uh, Bish, just a minute, apologies for butting in. Because I, I hear that narrative from both of you about how it is just one year and it's not enough. But some people will say, look, let's go back to the Good Luck Jonathan administration where um, just before the election, you know, where he, that, that he lost and that, that brought uh, President Muhammad Buhari in, that look, um, there was some level of pressure because at some point, Anik had said they cannot hold elections in some part of the North because of the insecurity there. And so we saw that in, in a few months, a few weeks, we saw the pressure from the military and security agencies on terrorists um, to the point where elections held in some parts, you know, in those areas where they felt like elections could not hold. 
which means that something can be done. Some people will say, look, it's just political will. It's not about length of time. It's just that political will and aggression. Yes, while I agree with you that the political will is very important, I will also um, I want you to know that, look, um, the, the, the situation that you pointed out was just one part of the country. And uh, what happened is that they had to move assets and resources from other parts of the country and shift them to that section of the country to be able to bring down the insecurity for elections to be able to hold. That approach is not sustainable. The only sustainable, sustainable approach is an approach that will look at the entire country holistically and make sure that every part of this country has the level of manpower and the equipment that they need to maintain security, law and order effectively all through the year. That approach, while it succeeded, in reducing insecurity could not have been sustained because it will be a while before the other places you had moved your asset from will not break loose in insecurity and they will not have to be forced to go back to that region and pull those assets again and send them back to the areas which heightened the insecurity. So it was a temporary measure for that particular purpose. But what we are looking at right now is a situation where we have, you know, law and order, security across the country. In that case now, it will require serious, concerted, persistent effort in terms of manpower recruitment, in terms of training, in terms of equipment. And you know that most of this equipment is not, they, they are not produced here locally in Nigeria. They will have to reach out through our foreign, Minister of Foreign Affairs to have bilateral discussions. And uh, most of this equipment are equally, um, you know, uh, classified equipment. And... Most countries that produce these things do have one or two conditions that they put in place before you can actually procure from them. So all of all these things put together will take a while uh, for you to be able to break through it and uh, ensure that the right equipment that they need um, is in place. What we are saying is that you can see effort being made by government. Not that government has achieved what it wants to achieve, but at least there is that willingness to do something. I'm not telling you that the level of insecurity has come down. Uh, based on the numbers that have been that we are given uh, previously, because it's not felt on the ground. We are still hearing repeated cases of kidnappings and uh, um, abductions. Only recently, there was one here in, in the FCT, uh, which the uh, uh, FCT police command had to go in and rescue the people. So what we want to see is a situation where there's relative... You cannot achieve 100% security. There's, a, there's nowhere in the world where you have absolute security. But you can attain a relative security which is a security that is enough for people to go about their normal um, socioeconomic activities without fear of being abducted or kidnapped. That is what we are talking about. And to achieve that level of security, it will need some time for you to be able to achieve some of those things that you had previously enumerated, such as recruitment, training, and equipment. Mm. Well, let me bring Mr. Salman in. I, still talking on that um, recruitment, training, and equipment, uh, do you see efforts being made at all? Because again, it's just one year. You can achieve, like both of you have said, in one year, all, all of that. But do you see, is there an indication that there, there is a, or any kind of effort being made um, in these areas? Well, I would say uh, that enough is not being done in this area because um, we have to have a framework within which uh, this will be carried out. Uh, if we talk about the three uh, fundamentals you're talking about, recruiting, uh, training and equipping, uh, and equipping uh, you find out that there are quite a lot of surveys or studies that have shown the uh, acceptable number of troops or even security forces that we should have, given our size, our population, and the challenges that are confronting us. If we take, for example, the military, even though the military is not the best suited for this response, you find out that we are having numbers within the range of uh, 250, depending on who you speak with, uh, and 300. Now, with a population of over 250 million, or even if you take the base number of 200 million, you find out that that number is not good enough. A lot of studies have shown that the minimum number that we need will be in the range of a million, a million plus, between a million to 1.5 million uh, men and women on the arm for us to actually uh, meet that aspirations of uh, securing our territorial integrity, but also projecting power beyond our borders. 
Uh, now, so if we take that and say that, okay, how do we recruit a million or 1.5 million people uh, and put them on their arms? There should be some kind of uh, a roadmap which should be made. Uh, I mean, everybody should know about it because this is the issue of Nigerians, uh, Nigeria for Nigerians. Uh, if there's that plan, uh, people should, it should be public. Uh, people should be allowed a say in it. And let's see the practicality of how that recruitment will be carried on. And the whole idea is that you have to increase the number. If you increase the number, then you can uh, kind of uh, pursue or you, 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 the offensive can be maintained and you can maintain or there will be enough boots on the ground. That way is the only way you can push out uh, or at least increase the tempo of eliminating uh, the bad eggs. Now, training is something that has been consistent. Uh, at every point time, the military is either fighting or training. Uh, we have seen that for the past years, uh, the military not best suited for what, the challenges that it found itself, but the fact that every country fights it, the war that it's first with, with the, what it has. Uh, there has been a lot of efforts to retrain the military for the role that is made to play. Now, the issue now is that what is the plan? And I know there could be such a plan, but wh how are they, they should be put in the public domain uh, to the large extent without compromising national security, of course. Uh, what is the plan? How do we entrain the military not suited for this type of warfare but the warfare that is faced with, how do we ensure that we train them to meet up the challenge that we are having? And even the new recruits, what are the mechanisms? Are you recruiting entirely fresh people? Are you co-opting uh, the retirees that are still willing and able to fight and, come and, and, and still... I mean, what are the modalities? What is the plan? And the thirdly, the issue of the equipping, which uh, my co-panelists also spoke about, uh, we could, there are efforts, I could see that, for example, uh, the attack helicopters that the Air Force is getting, which is very important for uh, counterinsurgency and this type of operations. Uh, some other also developments within the Army and, and, and the Navy also. Uh, but there is a need for a robust and sustained effort in that uh, regard. So what I'm saying is that one year, uh, it's enough that we should have come up with the roadmap. Uh, I see that uh, there is this, uh, as pointed out, there is more synergy between the various security forces, being either the armed forces, the police, and other paramilitary agencies. There is even more collaboration when you look at the uh, level at the National Security Advisor. But there are needs for more reforms. Uh, reforms in the state that in the past we have seen um, the issue of who is actually in control, kind of uh, what is the uh, channel of communication between the services, the Minister of Defense and the National Security Advisor? Who uh, should, I mean, who, who, who is that person that the box stops at? I mean, before, of course, who advises the president? Theoretically, is there, but you find out that in practice, there are a lot of confusions here and there. All those need to be sorted out. When you put those framework and you put everything uh, in order, then you are now set to ensure that you proactively use intelligence and, uh, you, you know, an and, 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 and intel-driven approach uh, to security. So there's much that needs to be done, and one year is enough to actually for us to have a pointer. So for me, uh, in that institutional reforms or in terms of uh, framework and policy, there's a lot that needs to be done one year after. We need to see more. We need to see the direction. We need to see what's need to be done and what are the timelines so that uh, Nigerians can uh, hold people accountable. For, so that uh, there are metrics to which uh, there will be metrics to measure uh, the, the achievements. But let me bring in Bishop Johnson because you talked about, you know, we've, we've talked or highlighted so, so much about um, the training of the military and what needs to be done. Well, some would say that, look, it is the police that requires, you know, much of this training because the responsibility and the duties that the military has taken on actually is a responsibility um, of the police. And, but the police has not been able to rise to the occasion in terms of fighting banditry, kidnapping, um, terrorism, as much as they should, you know, rise to the occasion, occasion rather. Um, 
Mr. Bish Johnson, what do you make of that in terms of the training and equipping of um, the Nigerian police? Okay. I think the police, we all agree that internal security, the police is the lead agency when it comes to internal security. I don't think that is, debate, that is something that is subject to debate. However, we have a situation in Nigeria where the police cannot do it alone. So the armed forces are coming in in aid of civil authority. You see, there has been years and decades of neglect of the Nigerian police, both in terms of manpower and in terms of you know um, their training and equipment. And so for us to be at that level that we are all you know hoping to be, um, it will require a very drastic uh, measure, which may not even be achieved in one you know in one term of a presidency or even a whole duration of a presidency if that president is lucky to go for two years. So it will require drastic and consistent approach to be able to bridge that gap, both in terms of manpower, in terms of funding, and even in terms of their equipment. Our police is not where it needs to be uh, for us to get to that level that you are talking about. And now, let's understand that we can't discuss security in isolation of the economy. The economy is what sustains, you know, whatever investment that you make in security. And so we are in a situation to where we are being battered, you know, um, economically, economic-wise. You know, revenue is falling and government is looking for various ways to improve, um, you know, revenue base and enhance the economy. Because all this recruitment that we are talking about, the training and the procurement of equipment, all of them are going to cost money. And mind you, security is not the only responsibility of government. You've had ASU is threatening to go on strike. You've got Labour, Nigerian Labour Congress. So you've got all bunch of problems, all of which require money, you know, funding to be able to actualize them. And so when we discuss security, it can be discussed in isolation of the economy. The economy can only carry uh, to an extent what you are trying to achieve. Now, in terms of framework, um, Nigeria has this uh, national security strategy that they do every four years. I think the last one was done in the last administration. Um, the problem we have in Nigeria is not that we don't know our problems or we don't have uh, them written down, you know, in black and white, you know, how we can deal with them. The greatest problem that Nigeria faces is problem of implementation. We have a lot of, um, you know, um, approaches, frameworks um, that are on the book. But the truth is that at the end of the day, we don't seem to follow through in the implementation of those things that we have documented. That national security strategy was brought, particularly the last one. I was privileged to be in, 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 in one of the conferences where it was unveiled. They sought information from various MDAs and, you know, um, all security agencies and including some private citizens and members of the armed forces and police and intelligence community, those who have those who are currently serving and those who have also retired, and all of them brought in their input and they all put them together. But to the extent that that national security uh, strategy is being followed is what is in doubt. I don't think that they are following through with what they had stated. It even has time frame of when, what, and what is going to be achieved. I believe that government is a continuum, particularly when we have this current administration that is also of the same political party, sharing mostly the same manifesto, uh, taking over from the previous administration, I believe that that document ought to have been ought to have looked at it. If they need to rejig it or tweak it to be able to suit the realities that we have on ground today, they can as well do that. Now, but it's not putting it on the book that is the issue. It's actually going through to implement what you have, you know, to see what the outcome is going to be. And so, my point is this. Um, for us to achieve the level of security that we are asking for in Nigeria, we have to increase recruitment. We have to increase training. We have to re-equip not just our police, all the security agencies, the armed forces, and the paramilitary organizations. You know, we've talked about internal security. Look, it, we, achieving the level of internal security we are looking for is going to be a mirage if there is no security in our border. If we can't secure our border, more than 50% of the problems that we have in Nigeria come across from our border. So if we can't secure our border, no matter what we do here internally, 
we will still be facing that those insecurity problems. So we have to be able to also look at you know um, the immigrations. You know what is it that they need to secure our border? Um, is it manpower? Is it equipment? Is it training? Whatever they need to improve in security of our border. All of all those things have to come come to play, and all of all these things combined requires funding. And like I said earlier, security cannot be discussed in isolation of the economy. They must go hand in hand.